This tutorial is part of our full stack React Django DRF channels project, DJ Chat. You can watch this tutorial and many more from our YouTube course playlist, or the whole course, including access to additional resources from our Udemy course. The Udemy course link, which provides the best price for the course, is in the video description. In this project, we are going to be utilizing Material UI or MUI. This provides pre built components and styling based on Google Material Design Guidelines. So, so it's going to allow us to quickly and easily build beautiful and responsive web applications that adhere to consistent design language. In this course, we're going to be utilizing Material UI or MUI. It is a very popular React UI library that provides pre built components and styling based on Google's material design guidelines. And needless to say, there are many other React UI libraries which provide pre built components and styling. This just happens to be probably one of the most popular, and that's why I've selected it for this project. If and when you do create other projects, it's well worth exploring some other UI libraries because they may have different strengths and weaknesses that might suit your particular project. As I probably keep mentioning, it's all about strengths and weaknesses, trying to identify the technologies that best suit your particular project specifications or your particular project. Now, with Material UI, it probably does have a steeper learning curve than some of the uh, some of the other UI libraries, and it's probably not as lightweight as some of the other libraries, which are some of the benefit, maybe some of the drawbacks, sorry, of um, Material UI, which is some of the strengths of others. So if you are maybe creating smaller projects, maybe this isn't the approach to take utilizing MUI. So like I said, do explore different Material UI libraries. And by doing so, you'll have a better idea yourself in terms of the strengths and weaknesses. Sometimes what some people suggest are strengths and weaknesses aren't necessarily always going to be the strengths and weaknesses that you find when you use a particular UI library. So I always find that having a read round and then trying it yourself is always the best approach. Now, it is pretty straightforward to integrate MUI with React, pretty much designed for it. So let's go ahead and access the documentation, so Material UI. So we have an installation option here. So there are two, well, there are a few different options in actual fact installing this. We're just going to go for the default, not necessarily talk too much about it, but you can see that we're going to be installing uh, Material, Emotion React, and Emotion Styled. So we'll just go ahead and use the default installation. So we copy that. Uh, let's go back into our projects and we'll go ahead and make sure we're in the correct folder file structure. Area. So we'll go ahead and npm install that. We will be utilizing the icons from Material UI. So if you scroll down a little bit here, there is an option to install the the keep going down the icons. So we will be utilizing those. So we copy that. So make sure you npm install MUI icon material. So back in the terminal, let's just go ahead and do that. So npm install MUI icons material. That's pretty much all that we need to do to get it installed. We can pretty much start using it instantly. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. Now, let's navigate to the home. That's the home page component. Let's see if we can apply it straight away. Material UI, like other UI libraries, is going to help us quickly and easily build responsive web applications. So we can see here there are a variety of components such as buttons, inputs, dialogues, and navigation elements. So if we go into components here, you can see all these components. And these are pre-created code, which we just need to simply copy and paste into our project to quickly and effectively build our web application. One of the first sections that we want to spend a little bit of time on learning a material UI uh, framework or library like this is to first of all take a look at where we the so we've got display we've got inputs display we've got feedback surface navigation menu layout so the first thing you probably want to have a look at is layout so that's the actual structure of our page typically that's the first thing we tend to build and then we add these other components to the page so we've got a number of different systems here to lay out the components on our page. 
which isn't necessarily helpful because if we're new to this, it just feels like it's a little bit overwhelming with the amount of different options. So we've got grid, grid two, so we've got stacks now, we've got containers and we've got boxes. So all these components typically we want to learn about. So box being at the top, that tends to be the most popular tool that we're going to be utilizing. So the box component serves as a wrapper component for most of the CSS utility needs. So this is a standard. Now I'm making this something you might have some experience utilizing uh, HTML. So typically in HTML to build the building blocks for our page, we use divs. So I liken a box to a type of div really, or a div um, element. So it's going to be one of the most popular um, elements we're going to be utilizing in this project, a box to build a wrapper or a container to contain components or elements or um, other things inside of that particular space that we define. So let's go back to the home here. Let's just go ahead and just use a box. So what we're going to do is use a box here. There we go. So it's like a wrapper around something. And then we can go ahead and add some text. So that's our home text there. Now you can see that it cannot find box because we're now using a resource from Material UI. So we're going to need to import this in. So let's go ahead and do exactly that. So import, um, so box. So there's many different resources we might need from Material UI. So I'm going to wrap that up, curly braces. So um, don't need the comma. So import box, and that's from, uh, that's going to be at Material UI, MUI Material. There we go. All right, so that's the resource we built it, brought in. And you can see now everything is nice and happy. So we can see and take a look at what that looks like in the browser. So let's go ahead and... Uh, npm run dev. Okay, so this is a page working. Now I am here in Chrome, so I'm going to press the function key in F12. If you're on Windows, you're probably going to press Shift Control um, or Control F12. So that brings up the, well, probably not just F12, um, in actual fact, on Windows. So that's going to bring up the development tool here. So we can take a look at the source to see what that actually builds. So you can see um, this box that we created here. You can see that in actual fact, it's created a set of divs here. You can see it has a pre-styled um, class. So that will reference potentially some sort of style that's pre-created by Material UI. And you can see the text that we had. So that's what we've just created there, this div. What we're going to be utilizing is the SSX prop. Okay, so this is going to provide us a way of creating any CSS, so st styling for our components directly in the components. So you can see an example here, SS, SX, and then you can see some styling related to that particular com box component. So we can apply some styling here. So in the box here, uh, let's go ahead and use SX. So the point here is that we're trying to include or localize any styling related to a particular component in the component. If we have some kind of site-wide styling that's required, then we want to potentially take a different approach to, or we want to place that styling somewhere else so it can be utilized globally. But here we're utilizing SX here to create styling within a component that's related to that particular component, or at least that's how I think about it. There's kind of two, at least one approach, sorry. So here, we have styling that's going to be related to this particular box element and nothing else. So if I was going to put something in here that's going to be related to other components like good reusability, we would put that somewhere that can then be utilized by multiple components. So let's just add, for example, a display. A display, colon, and then flex. Okay. So we're going to be utilizing flex, which is a CSS property that can be used to create flexible layouts in which elements are arranged in rows or columns. Okay, so this can be easily repositioned, resized according to available space and the needs of our design. So when we set display property to an element, flex, it turns the element into a flex container and its child elements then become flex items. So that's what we're defining here. So any other um, items, elements we add inside of this box will be flex, uh, flex items. 
Now, this all depends on how deep you want to get into this, of course. So Flex is, or Flexbox is just one way of structuring a page. You can see here in MUI, there are different approaches. We have this Grid 2 system now, which I think we will use grids as well as we now have this stack capability of stacking items. So there are definitely different ways of presenting or structuring data on the page. Now, if you want a quick overview of Flexbox, then just type in CSS Flex. That will probably take you to cssstricks.com. And this page here is a good introduction if you are new to Flex, uh, Flexbox, how to utilize all the basics and the term basic terminology of Flexbox or Flex. Right, so something else we're going to add is the CSS baseline component which is provided by Material UI that applies a baseline CSS reset to the page, which essentially means that um, it doesn't matter what browser we're using, it's going to try and make sure that every time we initiate our application on multiple browsers, we're going to have the same setup. We'll try and I'll try our best to have the same setup. So you can, again, read about CSS baselines and you can download many different versions of them. But that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to just set up the scene so that we can start building in a consistent way. Right, so what we're going to do here then is let's go ahead and just add that in. So we're going to add that into the box here. CSS baseline. There we go. So that is a resource that we need to import in. So let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Right, so that's what we've got so far. Um, ideally, that's going to be in parentheses. Okay, there we go. So what I've tried to do here is to break down this page into multiple components. That's my first phase. Well, actually, the first phase is to draw out maybe this design and then think about how I can make this page in components. So what I want to try and do, what the philosophy and the idea, general idea, and the way of thinking is thinking about reusable components. So can I build a component that can be utilized on multiple pages? So take this page, this structure, this structure is what we're going to be utilizing for the whole site. So whether you're on the home page, whether you're in the explore section, or whether you're in the the actual server, you can see the structure is generally the same. And that structure is that there is a, an app bar up here. There is a, a left side drawer. There is a, a secondary drawer, which is uh, this drawer here. And there is a main section. Okay, so that is how I've separated this page up, regardless of where we are. So I said again, we've got this, what I'm going to be calling the primary app bar, which is at the top here. So I'm going to call that the primary app bar. Now, this language comes from Material UI. So this is going to be called the primary app bar. Then on the left-hand side here, this is the primary draw. So this is going to be the primary draw. Again, I'm utilizing terminology from Material UI. This is going to be the secondary. Sorry, not the on the right-hand side, just this bit here. This is going to be the secondary draw. And in the middle here, I'm just going to call this main. So we now know, in actual fact, I'm going to need one, two, three, four, maybe components here. So now I've already gone through this process of creating this interface. So what I've done initially is I've built the interface without any of the um, internals of these sections. I've built the interface. So that's my first stage. So I'm not going to take you through that stage. Uh, so I'm going to just show the code, the finished code, if you like. So I'm going to try and structure it in a way to make it logical, but I'm not going to go through that phase first. So that would be my first phase, right, to actually just build this interface. So once I've got the interface in place, I've got a general handle of what's going on. And at that point, I'm then going to start breaking it up into different components. And that way, I know that I can reuse that component on separate pages so for example or components so here for example this left hand side primary draw when i go into the server you can see i'm still utilizing it but it's going to serve different data so what i want to do is i want to essentially build a blank setup of this and then i want to build this left hand side here and make it dynamic so that i can serve different things onto it whenever i use it in different components so this is how i'm going to set up my project I've got pages. 
So inside of here, remember the pages indicate different sections of my site. Now, this is a little bit uh, different, but inside of here, I'm going to be create a new folder called templates. So that's going to include the sections I've just mentioned. So in this templates here, you're going to find main, you're going to find the primary app, you're going to find the primary draw, secondary draw. So those are all the different elements I've just mentioned. So I'll say that again. So in the template, you're going to find the primary app bar code. Uh, you're going to find or the template for the primary app. You're going to find the template for this primary draw, the secondary draw and main. And what we're going to do is we're going to use that template then to serve different things on different pages. Don't worry if it's not making too much sense at this point. Once we start building, it will start to um, make a little bit more sense, hopefully. Right. So that's how we're going to build. And then what we're going to do is all the components that are needed inside of these templates, well, that's going to be dictated by a new folder here. And we're going to create a new folder here called components. So the individual components that are related to particular pages that should be in the templates, you're going to find that in components. So what we're going to do in components is we're going to have a dedicated, well, we're taking this approach, we're going to have a dedicated um, component folder for each of the templates that we're going to be building. So in the next tutorial, we're going to start off by building the app bar. So we're going to start to see this structure start to unfold.